So now we're going to take a look at the next setting, which is global photons. Now what this does is control the number of photons in the scene. So like we saw previously, when we increase this number, we get more photons. So like just check this out again. We're going to turn back to photon estimate, global unfiltered to see the photons. And let's start with, for example, 1000 photons and check the scene. So you can see now there are very few photons in the scene. Now if I've increased this back to 500,000 for example, you will see much more photons in the scene. Okay, so you see now much more photons. And I have very high luminosity setting for my surface so that this is why it looks so white. I'm gonna turn this down now. Let's turn it back to 100 okay and let's talk about the next settings the emit and receive mode these two settings control how many photons hit the scene if I use the emit mode it means Curry will fire 500,000 photons into the scene but some photons may miss the geometry and you will actually get less than 500,000 photons hitting the, your objects while in receive mode Curry will keep shooting the photons until 500,000 photons hit the actual geometry. Now the preview photon settings lets you just preview the photons while they're being shot into the scene, but it only works in light map mode. And it slows down rendering a little bit, so I usually turn it off. But if you want to see this preview of photons getting shot into the scene, you can turn it on. The power setting lets you control the intensity of the bounce light in the scene. So, for example, if you increase this number, the intensity of the bounce light will be multiplied. So, for this example, I have created a light that will act like a sun. So, let's take a look. I have this light here, which will shine through this window. And let's render out. Our light intensity is now at 150%. And you can see the problem with strong light sources like sun is that they create an overexposed areas. And if we want to get rid of this, we can reduce the intensity of the light source, so I'm going to divide it by 2 to 75%, and I'm going to use the power multiplier, so I can keep the same brightness of the rest of the scene. So I have entered 2 for the power, and I should get the same brightness here while not getting overexposed area from the sun. So you can see now, our direct sunlight is not overexposed anymore, while the brightness of the scene remained the same. So this is a very helpful setting, but don't go too high with these settings. I recommend you stay between 1 and 3 maybe, because if you go too high, you will wash out the rest of the scene, the shadows will start disappearing and your scene will look very flat.